So in this session of the Amersham Typhoon control software, we're going to look up setting the scan to do phosphor imaging. The first thing we want to do is choose our scan area. So from here, the screens that we currently sell have three different sizes, and these will be predetermined within the grid pattern here. You also have the option to go in here and change the size of the scan area. You could also create individual scan areas. When you create individual scan areas, the only advantage here is that you can basically pre-crop the image to make the file handling easier later on. In this case, we're going to do a single image, so I'm going to delete. You can just delete these by clicking on the keyboard. So I'm going to choose an area of interest on our storage fossil plate. And then the next thing we need to do is choose our pixel size. So the pixel size is related to the resolution. And depending on your sample, we have different resolutions available. So 200 micron is going to be used for maybe a quick screening, just checking what's going on. Uh, 100 micron you'd use for maybe a gel or a blot that's bigger than 10 by 10 centimeters. 50 micron would be used for a gel or blot smaller than 10 by 10 centimeters. The final two, the 25 and the 10 micron, are going to be used for things where you need fine features, such as a tissue section or doing an array. The difference between the 25 and the 10 micron resolution is, you'll see down here, if we go to the 25 micron, the scan time is 18 minutes, and you'll see we have a file size of 200 megabytes. But if I go to 10 microns, you'll see we get a way larger file, but the scan time is the same. The reason for that is the 10 micron image is actually made from the 25 micron image by using some mathematical processing. So usually the criteria for whether you use the 25 or the 10 is the file size that's being created and whether the software you're going to use for the analysis is able to use such a large file size. As we're just training here, I'm going to go for the 200 micron because that's going to give us a bit of a quicker scan time. Right now we only have storage faster as an option, but as we go through this, we'll be able to build up different methods in here for maybe things that different end users actually want to do with the system. We need to choose a voltage for our photomultiplier tube. You can dial this anywhere from 250 to 1000 volts. But it's difficult to ascertain what the correct voltage would be here. So we'd recommend that usually you'd set the sensitivity to this level of 4000. The reason for that is all of the photomultiplier tubes across all of our instruments will behave a little bit differently. But at the factory, they'll tune them all such that 4000 will give a very similar level of performance from instrument to instrument. You have the option to reduce the sensitivity to 1000 if you feel like you might be having a very strong signal and a chance for any saturated pixels. But like I said, 4000 is recommended and you're really going to control your signal intensity by the time of exposure to your sample. The next thing we need to do is choose a destination folder. We'd always strongly recommend storing to the local hard drive. If you try to export through a network cable or to a USB stick, any slowdown in that file transfer rate will actually create white lines across the image. So you really want to just take it straight to the hard drive. So we're going to choose a specific destination on the C drive in this case. You should give it a name. If you don't give it a name, it'll time and date stamp it, but we'll say test here. And then we have three different types of file format. They're all 16-bit images, just a little bit different in how they're reported out. So the .tiff is your generic 16-bit TIFF image. The .img is a different file format used by um, certain customers are happy with using this one. And then .gel is a kind of the GE format historically, and this actually gives you 100,000 grayscales. So this is strongly recommended for getting the most quantitative information out of the image is to use the .gel file. Once you have set up and are ready for your scan, you can save this method. So we'll go to here where it says save method. We'll click on this. We'll create a name. And now you'll see this is seeded up to the top here. But you'll now notice from this drop down list, you have our default method that we started off with. But then you can quickly go to the one we just created. 
and you have the option to actually create 50 custom methods under each module. So in here we could have 50 different custom methods, but the nice thing is if you're often going in and using the same one over and over again, you'll see here the top five custom will automatically go at the top of the list. So the ones that aren't so commonly used are gonna be lower down in the hierarchy. Once we're ready to scan, we're gonna go over here and hit the scan button. And you'll see here there's a quick reminder of the file size and the time, and then we'll hit scan. As the machine starts scanning, you'll notice these two arrows will start moving around and you'll see your image being displayed in the window here. And on the right hand side here, you'll see a histogram display of the pixel distribution over the image. We can adjust the contrast by using the slider bars on here. So we can clean up the image, but this is only going to affect the capture when you export or print. It will not change the raw data. Right now, if you look at the screen, and this is important here, that the screen will always display the 100,000 grayscale image from the .gel file. So you can look in the whole area, and right now you can see out of 100,000 counts, we have 3,704 pixels as the biggest intensity. You can go to this other option where you left click, drag and drop around an area, and then you can actually measure the intensity for a specific part of the image of interest. And as we said, right now you can export that display, which will save as a JPEG, or you can print it out. In either case, it's gonna take an exact screen dump of whatever you're seeing here. So if you don't wanna see that blue box, we'll just go back and hit whole area. If you don't wanna see the letter A, we can uncheck where it says show areas. And if we had different areas being scanned like A, B, C, D, then they'd all be shown in this image window and be designated with the appropriate letter. So let's say we take that off and then we could export or print that display. But in this case, we're gonna go save as, and this allows us to save now to the network or to a memory stick. It is already saved on the computer, but if you want to save it somewhere else and call it something else, we have that option. So you could change our destination, change the name, and maybe just take one of these files and take it somewhere else.